Hello YouTube. So today I'm just going to be quickly going over how I make uh, my VTOLs. Or how I've made all the VTOLs that have actually worked. So um, you do need the DLC that has robotic parts. Uh, if you want to make it use only one engine, you can of course just put an engine on the bottom and an engine on the back. You use separate engines, but I'm going to be showing you how to do this. So I use this hinge right here, and then set the angle limits so that one of the angles is zero, and the other is either 90 or negative 90, whichever is pointing down. It doesn't have to be exactly that. It can be like 89. I just wouldn't go 91. Um, and so, you want your center of gravity ahead of the center of lift, and you also want to make sure that when you move the engine, that the center of gravity doesn't move behind the center of lift. You can see here, on this one, it does not, which is what we want. As for the center of thrust, when it's pointing down, you want it just behind, like just on this side of the center of gravity. You want it as close as possible, but not in front of it, because otherwise then you're not going to have any elevator authority. It basically works the same as the center of lift. So, if we go launch it... <coughs> oh, and you can also set action groups. Um, set one action group to the extreme the maximum angle, which would be down, set another to the minimum angle, which would be straight, and then I'd say set a third to the afterburner, just to make things simple. And voila! It flies. You also, you know, need to make sure it has a positive thrust to weight ratio. And it really depends on what engine you use, whether or not you'll need to use something like the afterburner. With this one, I have to, because otherwise, you see, it starts going down. And then, when, once you switch into forward flight, try and angle up, because you don't have a whole lot of airspeed, so you're going to need a higher angle of attack to compensate for that. And then once you get up to speed, you can go. Now this does not go Mach 1, it just goes just below it. Uh, it might work better at higher altitudes, I'm not really sure. But, you know. It's fairly simple to do once you figure this stuff out. And honestly, it probably doesn't need this much wing area, but, oh well, I just kind of threw this together with my newfound beautiful knowledge. And this thing does work pretty well in terms of maneuverability, so that's, that's good. And then once you want to land, just get to the throttle to the point where the plane will descend, uh, and you also need to you know, slow down. You can also just glide back in if you really want to. That is also a thing you can do because it is an airplane; it's not, you know, a helicopter or anything. But if you want to land vertically, obviously you got to set the engine into position, and you got to slow down enough to the point where you are losing altitude, for sure. Preferably a bit more than this.
and you know you just gotta you're probably gonna have to consistently pull up because it is going to want to nosedive uh, and with less and less vertical or horizontal speed you're going to have to use more elevator to keep it up it's going to get to a point where you're going to need to use the engine uh, if it's got thrust vectoring like this one, that helps. You know, any engine with a gimbal turned on will work nicely. And we've landed. Awesome. To take off again. We could take off like a normal airplane, but come on, this is cooler. That's gonna be it for this. I don't know, I guess this is a tutorial now. Uh, thank you all for watching. See you in the next one.